My name is Matthew Lee. For the past five years, I've watched my dad make these videos, but today is different. There's no demo, there's no designer, it's lacking maturity. I'm pretty sure there's no educational value whatsoever. I'll go try and keep this safe for work. I have my hammer, and I'm not afraid to use it. I'm going to try and save this video, but if you want to take a pass on it, that's fine. Abandon all hope, ye who watch this. We're in! You're, You're watching, watching Notes and Nine. Hello, and welcome to Notes and Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 141, the Java vs. JavaScript Throwdown. I aim to misbehave. Okay, uh, like you heard from my uh, network sensor uh, today, uh, there will be no demo. Um, there's no designer. There's, uh, I've not done a show without a demo in a long time, but uh, today is going to be a, a little different if you haven't already determined that. Um, the whole point of today is I'm going to try and discuss, uh, seriously, at least a little bit, or pretend to, uh, a certain blog post that was made in the community last week. And I, I didn't get a chance to respond to it because, quite honestly, when, when you've done, you know, 141 videos, um, the thought of, like, typing up uh, in the comments, like, five paragraphs is just is just debilitating. Uh, so I thought, well, the best thing I could do is just respond uh, via uh, a video and quite honestly at, at the end of the show I'm going to try to have a little fun with the author's expense just make fun of him a little bit um, and really when I read that post uh, it was a little there's a little snark in, in his tone I, I thought and all I wanted to do was make fun of him um, but I figured well I should at least try to do a little educational fluff uh, to, to get me through to the ending and, and give me some cover so uh, again as, as you can tell there there's there's no rules for today uh, I've had a, a bunch of rules for notes and nine since I started uh, one of them is is not to show my face, which I just did again. Um, uh, another one is, is I really try not to give opinions. Um, I don't like giving opinions on podcasts. I don't like giving opinions on my show too heavily um, because I just like to educate. Um, but today we're, we're, I'm going to give you some opinions because, well, uh, he did. Um, so let's just start off with some opinions because uh, I've never really done this before. In my opinion, uh, you're doing it wrong if you think Java must be used for an X Pages application or is needed to make a great X, uh, X Pages application. Uh, it's not. Uh, you don't need to have Java. Yeah, I, I'm, I've said it before and I'll say it again that you might want to, uh, but you don't need Java. Uh, that's a total fallacy. Um, you're doing it wrong if you think JavaScript is more important than Java in X Pages. You know, every application's different. Um, I, I, quite honestly, you're doing it wrong if you're even discussing the technology of the application. It should just be about the application and not how you, how you use to make it. Um, you, you're doing it wrong if you think people use Java only because it's faster, because it doesn't have to go through this string parser or renderer or whatever and everyone wants to get you know their their stuff nanoseconds faster than than with java than if you were in javascript it's not about speed uh i moved to java and speed and my company is using java and speed between that and server-side javascript is not even a factor in that you're doing it wrong if you think using or not using Java is a universal advantage or disadvantage to separate your applications or your customers or your company or so. Again, it's not about the technology, and it shouldn't be. We shouldn't even be having this discussion. It's about the app and making the best applications out there. And I don't believe that the, the discussion is Java against JavaScript. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even done this video. I think it's more about the UI versus the back end is what I took from the blog post. Um, you're doing it wrong if you think X page is the only solution out there. It's not. Uh, there's lots of stuff. There's LAMP. There's you know the PHP's in there. There's you know a lot of people starting to post about this like Node.js and Backbone.js and MongoDB and you got Blue Mix or so. So there, there's always other stuff out there and there's that doesn't make them better or worse. You know you got to use the right tool for the right job. You're doing it wrong. And, and if you're a developer and you don't want to learn new things. Okay, and I firmly believe this. If you're a developer, if you're in IT, if you're if you're like an admin weenie, and you're in IT, you gotta learn, you know, Windows 8. 
at, at some point if you're an admin. If you're a developer, you're going to have to learn uh, PHP or Java or something that's not Lotus Script. Uh, you're going to have to break out of the box. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to have time to learn it with the kids at home and, and work things or so, but you should at least want to learn it and be open to learn it. Uh, otherwise, you know, IT is kind of a, a forward-moving industry, so if, if you don't want to learn new things, you're, you're going to have a problem. You're doing it wrong if you put ketchup on a hot dog. I've said it. Dirty Harry has said it. There are signs in Chicago saying it. Uh, so just realize that uh, you don't put ketchup on a hot dog. Okay, so in today's show, who's this blogger? Well, it's none other than my good friend, uh, Dr. Marky Roden. Uh, and, and here he is uh, in all of his, his glory drinking a Guinness, which I, actually I've never had a Guinness. I, I kind of fear dark beers, but maybe one day I'll, I'll venture out. Uh, but it, it won't be today. Okay, so what's the topic? Well, Marky, from that post, what I got from, from that post that, that Marky made, and I'll, I'll show you the link in a minute, is J he thinks JavaScript is the best thing since sliced bread, and, and that the UI, uh, the user experience, uh, for is much more important than the back end. And uh, he has this long list, which we're going to go through, of everything a next page's developer should consider learning before Java, and that Miller Lite is the best beer in the world. Okay, I'm kidding. He, he doesn't think Miller Lite is the best beer in the world. Uh, John Jardine does, uh, but Marky does have a little better taste than that, so let's give him credit. Um, I personally think that the UI and the back end are of equal importance. You know, I, if I have a car, I want it to be able to turn to the right as equally as it turns to the left. Okay, now maybe if I'm a NASCAR driver, that's not as important to me because uh, you just go in circles in the same direction. But uh, any other time, I think it's pretty important. I think for your web applications, yes, they have to look good. Uh, but the, the stuff behind it has to be readable. It has to be maintainable. Okay, yeah, it should be you know fairly fast. Though that's you know there's a lot of trade-offs to everything. Uh, but you got to be able to maintain uh, this code and, and develop it and enhance it fut in, in the future. Okay, before we go any further, let's have a quick little disclaimer. Um, and Marky Roden is a much better developer than I am. I mean, it's it's not even close. Um, he's forgotten more about uh, client-side JavaScript than I know of, about my children, and and that's undisputed. I mean, if if you look at the developers on the totem pole, uh, he's way up high, and, and I'm raising. You can't see it, but I'm raising my arm really high, and I'm I'm like down here, and now my arms arms down here. Um, so uh, that's just where where it stands. Um, he, he does, however have an Achilles heel and more specifically what he wears on his Achilles heel and we're going to discuss that later. Um, just so you know where I'm coming from, I was a pure notes client developer until XPages came along. Um, so this is the first um, experience, XPages was really the first web experience I had so I missed all the classic domino stuff like that. And I did a lot with Lotus Script and custom classes, which we're going to talk about Lotus Script custom classes uh, in a little bit. And as I, as I already alluded to, that I consider Marky my friend. Now, there's all sorts of friends in this world. There's Facebook friends, there's there's co-workers, there's acquaintances, there's sh SharePoint friends, there's the guy in the cube next to you who uh, farts all day. Uh, so there's all sorts of different friends, real friends and fake, fake friends. I consider Marky a, a real friend. Um, and I think he considers me a friend. Uh, I don't know why I'd get that impression, but, but at least I, I think so, and I hope so, because that friendship does mean a lot to me and I hope this video doesn't uh, screw that up. So what are we talking about today? Well uh, Marky made this post on his blog which was uh, aggregated through Planet Lotus so it was kind of popular. Why learning JavaScript is more critical to X page developers than Java. Okay and here's a link for it to, to help you out. Uh, xpag.es uh, slash question mark WTF. That's strike one. Don't, don't you just love link shorteners? I do. It just makes things a lot easier. Um, so one of the statements that he puts in here is um, that now this is not his statement. This is, a, this is a, I think, the premise of the article is he doesn't like the statement. Uh, beginner X pages developers need to learn Java. Everyone should learn Java. So apparently people are coming to him saying, I, I can't learn, I can't use X pages because I don't want to learn Java for for whatever reason. Um, and and th th these statements, I believe, originally came from a blog post from from Tim Tripconi uh, that I, I think a couple people agreed with. Um, 
and and you know again everyone has their opinion this is an opinionated show or and stuff like that but i i've not seen this statement heavily in the the community i've never made it I, i've made the opposite i know paul calhoun has made the opposite so let's just let's just throw this out there one more time you do not need to know java for x pages development y you don't but I maintain you might want to. Uh, there, there's a lot of good reasons uh, to want to learn learn it. But, but if we forget all the good reasons, uh, let's just look at this. You're a developer. X pages or not, every developer should want to learn. Period. Whether it's Java, whether it's PHP, whether it's Bootstrap, I don't care. But all the time, you should just always want to learn new things because that's the industry that we live in um it, it's a forward moving industry and if you don't want to learn you're going to fall behind and 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 i was stuck in, in the notes client at the trucking company for all that domino classic years where i wasn't you know i was mandated not to become a web developer even when i was building the website the first thing they said was you're not to become a web developer it, it was a trucking company it wasn't very forward thinking and, and I'm, I'm no longer there Okay, so what I like to do now is kind of like a rebut some of the points that he made in his blog post, uh, debate them, I guess, uh, if you will. And I really wanted to be careful here. I wanted to make sure that that you could the view the viewer could have good separation between his uh, opinion and my opinion because because they are so different. And I don't think he or, or really anyone would should ever be confused with my opinion uh, because I would that would just be wrong uh, uh, for that and and etc. So so we're gonna use uh, Marky's own words here uh, first, and then I'm gonna I think respond to them. When someone can demonstrate to me that they understand the UI, they can lecture me about how they need to separate themselves from it. Okay, uh, so thank you, Marky. And I have no idea what you just said uh, with that, quite honestly. Um, but it, it kind of sounds like that we're not allowed to discuss with you uh, the back end or, or this UI modeling or so until we prove to you that we, we fully understand it. Um, and I think that's a little pretentious, uh, but but it is what it is. Uh, but let's talk about separating the UI from the data. Um, and I don't have any credentials, but I'm going to give it a shot. Isn't this the whole point of X pages uh, to separate the the UI from the data? You know, to get around the problem we had the notes client where with a single form is bound to a single document. You know, like forever. And and quite honestly, um, how bad did that suck uh, in comparison to to today? Um, you know, your hands are tied in the UI and the notes client. Um, and it's it's very limiting uh, compared to what we can do today because one of the things we can do today is uh, multiple documents and data sources on a single X page. So that that uh, you know what how how do we achieve that with data separation of UI and, and the the back end stuff. Um, not only that, but the X pages takes it even a little further. We can actually separate our code from our data in the uh, at the NSF level. So we can have an NSF of just our code and an NSF or multiple NSFs of just our data and the. the I, I kind of like that. And what's the, the most powerful control, I think, in the next page is the repeat control, right? Isn't that the best? Why is that the best? Because there is no UI. Uh, because that forces the UI to be separate from the data. So you can make it look however you want. That's, that's the best thing in the world to me. And it's, it's not just X pages development. Many companies are, are, are getting into this, right? You know, you've got graphic designers and CSS and, and all these other people that kind of specialize in the front end. And then on the other side, you got, you know, the SQL guys and RPG and COBOL and, and all the back end people that, that bring the stuff out of the accounting systems and operation systems and whatever else. And, and really, um, do, do you want an iSeries RPG uh, programmer building a, a website, building the front end of a website? No, you don't. Trust me. I've been there. I've seen it. It's 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 disgusting, quite honestly. Uh, they think frame sets are cool um, in today's day and age. Really, they really do. Um, so you don't want that. You want to have people on the front end who at least have, have some idea of what, what they're doing. And let me just throw out this slide because this is a slide from uh, my beginning X Pages show or introduction X Pages uh, that's a couple years old. Even back then, we were talking about separating the UI from the data. Where else do we see this kind of separation? In the Domino backend classes. I mean, they're kind of handy, aren't they? I mean, we've got you know the front end classes. Now there aren't as many of those, but the, the back end classes, there's there's a lot of them, and and we use them all day, every day to to get stuff done. And what 
are the backing classes. They're separate from the UI. It's data separation. Okay. I think this is more appropriate. Those of you with a solid understanding of XPages and the JSF lifecycle who are wishing to take their server-side programming skills to the next level, learn Java. Uh, okay, um, well, that's clear. At least I understood what he's saying here. But I guess I would just say, simply say that I work with Java and XPages all the time. If, now, I still do some client work because of an app I'm trying to migrate over. But um, if I'm working in Java, there's, there's, or if I'm working on XPages, Java is going to get used and is being used uh, for the, some of the things we're doing with it, which I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit. Um, but I do not understand the JSF lifecycle. I wish I did. Uh, I, I, I should. Uh, I, I probably need to, uh, but I don't. I know there are phases. I know there's like a response phase, a render phase, a validation phase. And I think there's like four more phases that I couldn't name to save my life. So it is not true that you need to understand the JSF lifecycle um, to, to use Java. Uh, if anything, you should probably have a better understanding of the JSF lifecycle for any X pages. Uh, but, but even I won't go there because, again, I, I don't understand it totally myself yet. Um, it's worth learning, though. It's worth at least having on your list. Beginner X pages developers have enough to learn as it is. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Um, um, that's that's absolutely true. There, there's a ton to learn, a ton to learn, especially if you're a, a Nodes client developer, uh, coming in. But you know, I mean, if if you if you're a beginner X page and you're des developer and your destination is a master X page developer, well, there's many roads to get there, right? I mean, you don't have to go in in one particular road, which which Mark, you will list one later, which we'll talk about. Um, but, you know, maybe you want to start with server-side JavaScript and just get functionality to work before you try to make things pretty. Um, you know, I'd much rather have a, a working app before I decide what color that app's going to be. Um, but maybe you're more graphically bent and you want to work uh, from the front end first. You know, there's, there's lots of ways to get there. But keep in mind, this isn't 2009, 2010. It's a lot easier to position your, your elements on the page because now we have frameworks like One UI and Bootstrap. And, and what's a, a framework for? It's, it's designed to separate your UI from your data. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. Imagine a Notes client developer who has never created a web-based application before, which is going to serve them better. JavaScript or Java answer JavaScript. The same language for client-side JavaScript and server-side JavaScript. This was me, okay, again, so I don't need to imagine this. This, this absolutely was me. But let, let's talk about this. What is JavaScript and XPages? What does that mean? Right, here's a whole bunch of code snippets of, of server-side JavaScript. And if you look on here, and again, I'm, these are not the fanciest things in the world because I, I went back to old notes and nines, um, but they're, they're, they're working snippets, and there is not that much core JavaScript language used in, in server-side JavaScript. Now, obviously, you can use more than this, uh, but I find that you don't need a, a ton of it often because you're you're using the, um, the, the 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 object model like document and database and stuff like that just like you wouldn't load a script or maybe you're using the, the at formulas that have been provided for you for certain things and stuff like that um, so again that's that's JavaScript on the server and and quite honestly I learned and I still every now and then if I need to I go to w3 schools and and that has enough examples to really get you by you know the, the for next or if then or you know switch statement or things like that um, it's it's not that difficult because you don't need uh, to know a lot of core JavaScript in my opinion on the server side so so Mark you must be talking about client-side JavaScript here but client-side JavaScript can't use any of that dominant object model right that it lives in the browser it, it uses the dom which is not available in the server side javascript so but it uses the dom for all this stuff right you got to get these elements by id and, and and whatever else but there are lots of browsers that this stuff runs in i mean there, there's a ton of them there's you know uh, safari there's chrome there's the one that will not be named uh, yet there's firefox and each of those have different versions of those browsers and, and they all run on different operating systems, too. And yes, then there is uh, the Voldemort, the, the Internet Explorer of the browsers, uh, Inter Internet Explorer. And and 
that wow, that's that's just a lot going on there. And but, so to get around this, what do you do? You use jQuery, or use Dojo, right? These frameworks uh, that take this pain away from you. But now you're not learning JavaScript. You're you're learning a framework, which by the way, jQuery and Dojo don't actually work in server-side JavaScript. Last I saw. Um, so all that being said while the client side and server side are listed as javascript is it really the same language and all of this is less scary than learning java itself uh, i kind of have a problem with that I, I don't think client side javascript and server side javascript are truly the same language because you use them completely differently um with what's inside it okay so here's my thought if you have ever made a custom class in lotus script then I personally believe you can handle and benefit from Java and X Pages immediately. I, I will absolutely say that X Pages only re and I really clicked for me once I really got into the Java objects, which I fought tooth and nail about. I wanted no part of Java. I, I was I was dead set against it. I was you know I was kind of making I was having some issues with IBM. I was in the design partner forum saying this is this and that is that uh, it was just nuts I didn't want to go to Java I wanted no part of it so what did I do I tried making custom classes with JavaScript really I, I did it it seemed like a good idea at the time um, and I was told you could do it um, and I talked to many many people about it Jeremy and Tim and, and a bunch of people tried to help me and I even did a notes 9 on on the technique which which did actually work uh, for, for a little bit um, but it, it was it just wasn't coming to me so I figured I, I had to go to the top and and I had it out with Phil Riand so there's this the view conference in Las Vegas and, and Phil Re was there and if you don't know he's he's like the head guy he kind of like invented X pages I, I would guess he's the, the godfather of of X pages he's kind of like moved on a little bit uh, higher up in IBM but again he's he was the the the, the line stop there with Phil and, and I went into that conference because I knew he was going to be there and and I went in with a mission and I was gonna have it out with him on this problem with the server side JavaScript uh, not not working well to replace custom classes in Lotus script and and it, it was a battle he was on the vendor floor I pulled him aside and and I, I stood my ground and and we had it out I lost uh, I, I didn't just lose I lost royally and and it wasn't it wasn't even a contest he had me convinced oh yeah okay it's time to learn java um it's just the way it is um server-side javascript objects custom objects is just not a viable option um it, it's a crappy syntax to live in it's not serializable so if, if you do it the way you would like in lotus script we'd actually have like methods and stuff like there you can't put them in certain scopes um and if, if you want more information that Tim Tricconi put a pretty good comment on on the Marky blog post at the, the WTF link um, uh, explaining why so so you cannot do custom classes in server-side JavaScript uh, effectively you need to use Java why do you want to do that why do you want your own custom objects well I've already said how handy the the domino object model is wouldn't it be nice if you had a, like a company object model for your own stuff well in my old job at the trucking company I did that you know I had a company class and contact and activity terminal for our different locations and revenue and I had methods like you know company I could get all my contacts I could get the primary contact for the contact I could get the primary phone number or, or whatever and activities etc just you know just like the domino object model but your own stuff right and once I did that my agents got so much smaller they were so much easier to read it was so much faster to build things and get my data because that's what it's about right it's about getting data and working with that uh, and yes you have to present it nice it's got to look good but it's 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 about the data so in the current job we're doing a similar thing you know we're just using Java so I've got uh, objects for project for a manifest for packages for exhibitors an employee object well that's kind of handy because I'm kind of dealing with employees all day long uh, facilities and then I even have like helper objects now like a package set so like if I've, I'm shipping 10 packages and oh gosh maybe I want to find the total weight or or the total cube space on the how much it's gonna fill in the truck right so now I can have an object that I can just throw these packages in and easily get that stuff back at all times and that and unlike Lotus script these objects can persist globally through the magic of managed beans um, and they're also easy to reuse and span multiple databases this is power 
this is speed, not speed of rendering or the, the milliseconds you save going from Java to, to, to JavaScript, but this has readable code that's well documented and a good editor. Um, this, this is just security for for your code and, and your your company in, in my opinion it's a great place to be now, i know everyone just can't get out and do java because again you've got the kids at home and stuff like that but this is this is something you should want to try to learn um whether it's in x, x pages or or maybe php has its own version of custom classes and stuff like that but there's a lot of power here all right buckle up I believe XPages web developers using XPages need to have a solid understanding of these technologies to be successful in this proper order. Lotus Notes Object Model, HTML, HTML5, JavaScript, Basic Programming, External Libraries, jQuery Dojo, the XSP Framework for Client JavaScript Interaction with the XPages, Unique Browser Deviations from the ECMA Standards, Looking at You, i.e. CSS, unique browser deviations from the standards, XML, JSF lifecycle, other things I have forgotten, and finally, Java. Wow, that's something. Um, and he complains us Java people are, are spreading fear. If I saw that list, there's no way I would I would look at X pages, and, and I'd just be intimidated. I would basically crawl in, into a ball and probably suck my thumb. Um, and and I, that's this is one of the reasons why I got a little I'm getting a little snarky with this video. Or again, just trying to have fun with it is is that statement that and the the kitten one. Um, th that that is not true in my opinion. That list, that order, uh, anything about that. Um, I work with X pages every day. I've done this screencast since 2009, back when there was no documentation. I'm only comfortable with four things on that list. And, and quite honestly, the HTML, HTML5, I'm, that's a gimme because I'm only so comfortable with that. Um, now, don't anyone tell Declan this. Oh, okay, actually, you can. I mean, he already knows. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, and, and I'm getting by fairly well. Uh, I, I'm doing iPad applications. I'm doing X Pages applications with X with X Pages, obviously. Um, and and the users are happy and we're productive and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, if you're a hired gun, if you're a top flight consultant, then yeah, you might want to know about the unique browser deviations from the ECMA standards. Um, I have no idea how to learn that, you know, other than doing. Um, I don't know if there's a book for that. Um, I know there's Stack Overflow in case I get in trouble. I know there's a community I can, you know, forums and community that I can rely on. And worst case, I can always go to a consultant who you might expect to know that. The typical X page developer does not need to know all those things on the list and does not need to know those things in that order. You learn by doing. These are the four things that I know uh, pretty well, and it's it's working out pretty well so far. Coding in Java is not necessary to build a web-based application using X pages. JavaScript is. I do apologize for the pitch. I did not intend to do that. Um, though, actually, it's kind of a good idea if I, if I would have thought about it. Uh, I just messed the app there up. But n not so fast, slick on that. Uh, that that it's that you must use JavaScript for an X pages application, and you're you you do not need to use Java, right? What language is this? It says it's server-side JavaScript, but what is session scope? It's a Java object. All the scopes are Java objects. They're, ha they're hash maps. They're java.util.hashmap. So you're going to use scope variables, I, I imagine, uh, no matter what your application is. At some point, you're going to put something in scope. It's Java. So maybe the more understanding you have on Java, the better off life is going to get for, for interacting with these. Um, and maybe you want to do other things like an array list, which, which I did a demo on, using server-side JavaScript and an array list to make like a little shopping cart kind of thing. Or a tree map uh, to sort, you know, a hash map. Um, so that's, that's, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Coding a web browser user interface requires JavaScript and cannot be done in Java. Honestly, I get confused between this one statement and the last one. 
a lot. But but here again, JavaScript can't talk. Client side JavaScript cannot talk directly to the NSF using the object model at least. I mean, yes, it can get data from like a read view entries or or a URL that you you've set up before. But if you're just using the, the view, the build and view stuff, well. Uh, uh, and I've not, so I don't know, but I, I imagine it's fairly limiting. Um, but again, to get a good looking website, I'll point you to the, the X Pages Bootstrap project. Yeah, so, so that does a lot of work for you that you don't need to use client side JavaScript yourself. Uh, I do very little client side JavaScript. I should do more. There's, there's absolutely no question. I should do more in this. If I want, I want to get in these data grids that Marky and, and Brad have been posting about forever. And, and that's, that's huge. And if you want to do graphs, you're, you're, you're going to get in the JavaScript on, on the client side or so, but, um, not every database needs graphs and you can do a lot without going to client-side JavaScript, uh, I believe. Okay, yeah, sure. Now, maybe you're, you're going to have a couple extra refreshes or a couple extra round trips to the servers, and maybe that's going to take some time. But Mark is kind of complaining about, well, don't use Java just because it's milliseconds faster. You know, if, if you're not writing the next Facebook, if you got, a, you know, 500 users or whatever, depending on your infrastructure. So, you know, partial refreshes aren't the end of the world. It's not poison. JavaScript skills are transferable to any web server client environment. Java much less so. Well, uh, maybe unless the job is specific for back-end development. I, I, but I can't really dispute that statement. I, I do know that every now and then I see on Twitter someone posts, you know, the most popular programming languages in the world and stuff like that. And my recollection is Java is historically at the top of that list. So uh, I think if you do know Java, it's, it's, just, it's a good skill that will serve you well. That's one of the reasons why I did decide to embrace it in case, you know, something didn't work out. Now, I at least know Java, and I believe that will help me translate, transfer to an Objective-C or, or something else that, that's a similar language. Because no customer ever said, this website looks like crap, but the pages look so fast, I am in love with it. Yeah, no one's ever said that. Uh, I, I, yeah, that no one's ever said, let's put all our resources in the back end and, 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 and ignore the front end you know everyone wants to really have the greatest front end in the world at the expense of the back end yeah no one's ever said that <sighs> customers have said though i can't afford a porsche but i can afford a chevy you know nothing's free in life you know sometimes you have to make some changes or some compromises customers have said great site i just wish we weren't over budget customers have said Wow, if only we could support this damn generic framework that the consultant gave us. I wish it didn't store view names and replica IDs in each freaking document. So, customers say a lot of things. End users are more forgiving of a beautiful website which is slightly slow than a blazing fast, ugly, hard to use site. And that's absolutely true. That is a true statement. And and Scott Good used to do this great uh, presentation at, at the Lotus Fair in the conferences. Says you can't fix ugly. Absolutely. If your thing looks ugly, there's going to be a little lack of trust. Okay. But uh, that's not a universal, right? I mean, GoDaddy is an ugly website with all these upsells and stuff like that. Craigslist, uh, which which I don't actually use, but I, I just clicked on just to see what it looked like because I heard about it, uh, is not exactly attractive, and both of them seem to be doing pretty well. So yes, you do have to make your stuff look good, um, but uh, the back end has to work too. And again, my premise is the UI and the back end. It's a 50-50 relationship. It's a yin it's a yang right? So it's not you don't want to overweight to the front end at the expense of the back end. I am not saying that using Java is wrong. I just want to temper the expectation that everyone needs to learn Java. In my opinion, they don't. And I agree with that opinion. I really do. You don't need to learn Java. Again, you should, I think, or you should at least want to. Java is a tool. Why wouldn't you want to add a tool to your toolbox? As, re as resources allow, as you can. Again, I was the most closed-minded person in the world, and... And I wanted no part of Java, and eventually I did come around, and and I realized that that the fear I had from Java 
was irrational. And, and, and I should never have let myself get that way. And, and I would recommend that no one should be afraid of learning something new. Uh, when it comes to tools, I don't need this. I don't need six monitors. Doesn't mean I don't want them. Um, oh, I have a typo there. That's lovely. Um, no, this is not my desk and most likely will never be my desk. But uh, again, why not want to have a tool and at least have it on your radar with a way to get to it? Every time you use the five-year-old IBM X-Pages out-of-the-box doji control and tell a customer that it is good interface, a kitten dies. Ouch. You, you got me. I give up. That, that hurts my heart. Um, not really. Uh, th this is an absolute statement, and it's, it's wrong. It's a wrong thing to say, and I know you're saying it kind of jokingly. At least, at least I, I assume you are. Um, the, the website, the application determines what the application should look like. Yes, are the X pages dojo controls out of the box a little lacking in some cases? Yeah. Um, the tab control in particular is pretty bad, but it doesn't mean it's a universal don't do it. Um, nothing is. You know, you have to make the choices that that fit in the budget, fit with your your customer, fit with the project requirements. Um, and you brought the kitten thing out. I mean, I mean really, that's been around forever. Luckily, I'm more of a dog guy. So if a kitten gets whacked in the building of an X Pages application, I couldn't care less. The kitten should have eight more lives. If he squandered them on other technologies, that's his own fault. So good riddance, kitten. C'est la vie. Uh, so that would really end my any attempt to try to be serious in this show. Not that uh, there was much of an attempt made to begin with. Um, if this was hockey, I, I would at this point, upon reading the, the, that post, I would drop the gloves, which I, I know Marky doesn't get that, but Oh, well. Um, so, Marky, you're saying UI design is everything, but you intentionally wear mismatched socks. For the record, I can't even match my own socks. What, what's up with that? That That's a Unix thing. That's a guy with a Unix, a long beard or so. They do stuff like that. The back-end people do something like that. Not the UI guy. they got to at least match their socks. It, it only makes sense. We all learned from Star Wars that only the Sith deal in absolutes. You've got absolute statements all over your blog post. So what are you now? You're Darth Marky with mismatched socks instead of a lightsaber? Again, it doesn't make sense. You, there's more than one path to get there. There's more than one way to do things depending on the person's time and skill and the, the money, the budget, and the project and everything like that. You know, there, there's no absolutes in this world. The most posh house in the world still needs a good HVAC system. You know, you could be in Bill Gates' house with his trampoline pit, and if it doesn't have air conditioning and heating and lights and stuff like that, you might not want to spend all that much time there. Or, and like a year ago, you remember that cruise ship that ran out of power and they were just stuck there and poop was floating in the halls? That was a ship that had a really nice UI, uh, but a bad back-end environment. I'm ashamed. I'm going to let you finish, but demo.zamano.com has the best UI design of all time. Okay, no it doesn't, and it's not intended to, right? It's just intended to fill a need to, to show your demos. A lot of apps are like that too, and a lot of apps don't need the most fanciest bells and whistles and and all this time spent on, on you know, saving the server from partial refreshes and stuff like that. It's You're saying the opposite extreme of... You're arguing the opposite extreme of, of what you're saying, I think. You're saying, don't use Java. Who cares about Java? Because it can be a couple milliseconds faster. And on the other side is, why be afraid of a partial refresh if your application can support it? Right? If, if, the, if you're building Facebook, yeah, that stuff adds up. If you're building a, a, an app for your internal sales force, uh, then you know maybe you can live with a partial refresh here or there and it's not the end of the world you don't need to spend another three hours trying to do a better solution in client-side javascript you have a funny accent that's strike two careful now okay that that was kind of meaningless but it, it, it is but you got my daughter to speak in english so that, that was that was kind of fun your post is spoken like somebody who bills by the hour okay that's not my quote but quite honestly i thought it was damn funny um and I'll close out with Neener, Neener, Neener. That's it. I'm pulling the plug, man.
And that's my show. Uh, for the most part, I want to thank uh, Matthew for doing the introduction and not actually throwing his hammer at me. Uh, Elizabeth for her speaking part and her attempt at English. Quite honestly, her Russian is her Russian accent is much better, um, but I, I didn't think that made any sense. Uh, my wife Becky, who at the very last moment showed me this lip syncing app, um, which caused me to have to redo half the show uh, to fit that stuff in. And of course, for Marky, it really was a great post and it prompted even better discussion. Uh, so even if I don't agree with it, it's it's great. It's great to have in the community. It's great to have the discussion out there. And uh, I I want to thank him in advance, uh, hoping uh, that he really is a good sport for for this show. Uh, everything I did was out of love and respect. Um, and if you want, uh, stick around for a few uh, bloopers. And that's my show. Um, here's my contact information. If you have any questions or you want to cancel notes and nine, uh, just let me know. And I thank you for your time. Sting. What? <laughs> I wonder why you said there was no maturity in this. <laughs> yeah, there's no maturity in this. Mm, I'm not feeling that one. You're not feeling that one? No. Okay. That's it. D d n yeah, nah. I'm pulling the plug. <laughs> Wait, do, do I start from here? Or? No, no. Okay, and action. How does it start again? For the record, I can't even match okay, my own. Okay, for the team. record. Yeah. Action. Nina, Nina, Nina. Is this second grade class to you? What? Is it out of you? Yes. And. Okay. Are you ready? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'm not. Designer. It's even lacking maturity. Actually, I'm pretty convinced that there's no. <laughs> okay. And? Oh, hold on. Can I just take my glasses off? If you want, they but can me. you see the words? No. Then don't you want them on? No. There's no... <laughs> Crap. <laughs> you ready? No. Abandon all hope you enter. I'm pretty sure there's no educational value whatsoever. What's the rest? <laughs> oh, it goes on to the next paragraph. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Abandon hope all ye who watch this. Oh, abandon all hope ye who watch this. The words are a distraction. My name is Mac Lee. <laughs> in English. It is English. <laughs> that was mumbling language. Ready? Yep. Get serious. Action. My name is Matthew Leedy. Oh, now really? <laughs> really? That's how we're doing this? Yes. Okay. Cut. Cut. <laughs> you ready? Take five. She won. Sit up. No, not too high. You're out you're, you're of the picture. <laughs> 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 oh, it's so funny. Don't laugh. It's throwing me off focus. This is the movie making process. It's throwing me off focus. Yeah. Am I being paid for this?